everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna unbox the Fender Lead 3. That's what's in this box. It's one of the purple ones too, with humbuckers. So anyways, long story short, right after Winter Nam, Fender writes me, I'm like, hey, you want a guitar? I'm like, you think I'm gonna say no to that? I love Fender guitars. Obviously, I wanna work with Fender. This is the first time they've reached out to me. And then I was like, yeah, of course, of course, send me a guitar. I'm like, well, do you want a Fender Lead 2 or a Fender Lead 3? And then I had to think about it for a little bit because I tried both those guitars at Winter Nam. Uh, they've got the Lead 2 with single coils and the Lead 3 with humbuckers. The Lead 2 has an out of phase setting between the two singles and the Lead 3 has coil cuts on the humbuckers. And so I ended up thinking about it for a while and I decided on the 3 which you already know because of the title about the video and everything like that. Um, to me, like my experience and the reason I've always wanted a real Fender lead is because I've had this guy in my quiver, which started out as a pretty bad lead knockoff. And I used it pretty much exclusively in my punk rock band for five, six years, something like that. As you can see, I've highly modified this thing. I put a wood pickguard on here, had a friend pinstripe it, put a hot rail right in the middle position there. And it was just kind of a punk rock machine for me, but I always wanted the real thing. So I decided that going for the humbuckers would kind of be more like the heart and soul of why I've always wanted a lead because that's how I use it. So let's get into it. You want to see what's in the box. I want to see what's in the box. Let's rip it open. Oh, I really mean rip too. It's got those big brass staples. I really wish I was pulling those instead of ripping. Uh, well, I guess I can turn, I can send the box top in Defender to collect a special prize or something like that. I've never had a new Fender guitar. Every Fender guitar I've ever owned, I bought used. I've bought new Squires. And I know it's, it's a Mexican Fender. I'm not, you know, I don't have a new American Fender or anything like that, but I think this is a big day for me. Well, I think they're all these. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's got a fairly unique smell to it. I like to smell guitars. I admit it. Ooh. That purple. Oh. It looks better here in the garage than it even did at Nam. Just sparkly, sparkly, sparkly. Some kind of silica pack. It looks fancy pants. Do not eat. Man, that's all I want to do now. Now that they put that in my head, that's all I want to do. Too cool. I'm stoked right now. Guys, Fender sent me a guitar. I feel like we should celebrate somehow. Really nice and lightweight. Kind of reminds me of my Duosonic almost. It's got that Mexican strap feel to the neck. I think I said that. Obviously it needs to be tuned and set up a little bit. Guitars aren't supposed to be in tune when you get them. They're, they're actually supposed to slack the strings for shipping reasons. It's interesting. It has a gloss front of the headstock, but the back of the neck and the back of the headstock is a really nice, smooth matte finish. Very comfortable. The guitar is not really yours until you do that. The moment you take the plastic off, it's like licking it. It means no one else can claim it. You've claimed it. I love the white humbuckers 
and knobs contrasted against the black pickguard. And just like the kind of dark purple. It's a really fun look. I don't think the originals were color themed that way. I think they were they were all black pickups on a black pickguard, right? I'm glad they went a little bit uh, a little bit different on that instead of trying to completely replicate the original look. Well, I'm gonna have to get in there and uh, pull off the uh, the tinier bits of plastic. You know how it is. And I'll get stuck underneath the knobs and the the nuts and whatnot. Take the little tag off the headstock. Or we could just establish right now that the new trend for 2020 is going to be leaving tags hanging on guitars. Kind of way people leave tags on a uh, on baseball hats and whatnot. That can be a fad, right? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I love the big old beefy switches they put on this. I'm glad they kept that, um, original kind of feature of the lead two or lead three instead of putting on a newer more modern switch it's just these they feel like they're off of like a control panel for some sort of industrial equipment there's two of them one is the pickup selector I actually when i came back from winter nam i felt a little embarrassed that i didn't understand what the two switches did right away so i studied up on it uh, the first is obviously a pickup selector neck bridge middle and the other one very interestingly very unique choice, I think, uh, for whoever designed these things in the late 70s, is on one side, you're coil cutting the neck humbucker. In the middle, you're coil cutting none of them. And in, the, and in that position, you're coil cutting the bridge. So you can coil cut either or, but not both. It's an, uh, it's an interesting way to go. I'm used to having a switch that coil cuts both at the same time, just a little flick switch. So it's interesting to have that decision that you have to make while you're playing. Like, am I gonna coil cut the bridge or the neck? And then I can flick to the next pickup, which will just be a humbucker. So, I don't know, discuss it down below. Let's see what this thing sounds like. I can tell you right off the bat, I'm gonna wanna spend some time setting this up uh, just to get the action where I want it. It feels like they set the strings to be super, super flat, where I like the strings to follow the radius quite a bit more. So there's, there's stuff I could do to dial this in a little bit better, but uh, I'm not too surprised. It's in really great condition and you know, it's in fully playable condition for a guitar that's just shown up. I always do a little bit of setup on everything that I get. Got all my mics ready to go. Here's how it sounds. Bridge position. Those mics are a little hot. There's that single coil sound. cuts. I used to be kind of down on them because a coil cut humbucker doesn't always sound exactly like a single coil. But you know what? They get you pretty dang close. They get you that character and turn a guitar that's normally more of that humbucker thud into a guitar with a bit of twang. Definitely gonna have to dial in the action on the strings. It really is just completely flat across the saddles right now. But the neck itself is very comfortable. The fretwork is what you would expect from a Mexican Fender. It's got vintage split top tuners on it. I'm a big fan of that style of tuner. 
It tuned up just fine. The tuners are nice and smooth and stiff. Really nice lightweight guitar. Like I said, kind of reminds me of my Duosonic. Slightly heavy. It's going to be heavier than the Duosonic, but it's certainly lighter than I'd expect a Strat to be. And that finish. Jeez. All right. Keep up on the tuning because the strings have just been tuned up for maybe the first time. All right, let's try some drive and stuff. Here's a Tube Screamer. Here is the Rev G2. the neck pickup out for a while. Cold cut. That's both pickups on. Here it is with the neck coil cut. Middle again. And bridge. There's some interesting options there. guys I'm really excited about this I'm excited that I'm on Fender's map and they're excited to send me stuff I'm excited to have a guitar that has been on my wish list for decades now it really has it's a newer version of it which is just fine with me it's got a lot to work with here tonally between the coil cuts and the two humbuckers I do need to dial it in. It didn't come set up the way I'd like. I will say that. It should have been set up better. 
I'll say that right now to Fender. Um, but I love that finish. I have no problem setting this up myself. It's a, you know, a couple turns with the Allen key. It came in the bag. Right there. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Well, stay tuned everyone. Uh, I'm sure to do all kinds of more explorations with this guitar and feature in all kinds of videos. Uh, I think it sounds good. I like the sound of these humbuckers. Uh, I'm glad I picked the humbuckers over the lead two because I thought those singles were just a little bit anemic for my taste. Maybe uh, people who are you know Mustang lovers and like that kind of thinner sound and lean into out of phase sounds uh, with the out of phase switch will prefer the lead two. But I'm really glad I went with a three. I think that is the model for me as far as the leads go. All right. Well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment, support us on Patreon, and uh, you know, do everything else. I don't know. Uh, go have a nice lunch. Go have a nice breakfast or something like that, or dinner. I don't, whatever meal it's gonna be, go treat yourself. Have something nice. All right, I'm gonna play out with probably some like ambient style stuff or something, and uh, stay grounded. Bye, everybody. Bye.